Quickly back to Alvain van der Merwe, Director of Investment Sunland Private Clients. Here's his prediction for the market going forward. In line with our GDP growth, which is going to be modest for at least... Right, we're having some technical problems. Uh, one of those gremlins in the studio this evening. Instead of Alvain's, let's get your prediction of the market <laughs> going forward. Look, I think that the market can continue to move up. Um, having said that, I think the economy is going to be fairly muted, but I would be looking at a very, much more modest return during the course of next year. So if you think uh, this year, what will we end up with? It's entirely possible that we have more or less a 25% return out of, the, out of the local market for the year as a whole. Now, in any year, 25% return would be absolutely spectacular. So at the end of the day, I think we've, we've had a really good year after a phenomenally difficult start. We can't expect to see that type of return going forward. I would think something more in line with what, you know, from my perspective, nominal GDP grows at, which you're looking at around about maybe 10 or 12 percent um, as, a, as a return, which is, which is not as exciting as it's been, but a steady return. Simon, let's put this one to bed now and, and finalize with, with your thoughts on it. I, I think we've still got momentum through to the end of the year. There's still money coming in in the, in, the, in the Christmas period, although it's quiet, we tend to see a lot of buying that certainly is more bullish for a market than bearish. Uh, and I'm with Kevin. I think for next year, we're not going to come anywhere near to, 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 to what we saw this year. And I think if next year plays out good, uh, 10 or 12 percent is not going to be a shabby number at all. And if I, were, if I were a betting man, I would say if we can look for our overall market next year to give us that 10 or 12 percent, that's still leaves us off that high from May 2008. So we're not yet at all-time highs. There we're looking 2011. But, but Simon, don't you agree that... I was giving him the final word, but you always... <laughs> did the you final actually say, say I did. I said word. the final word. I wasn't yes. focused. Anyway, what is, what is your final word on okay, this? Okay, the final word is that if we get a 10 or 12% out of the market, then it's almost given given the economy time to catch up a little bit. In other words, we haven't continued to rush ahead and then increase the risk that we have to pull back. Um, so it would be nice if we have a more, it would be actually a lot better if we had a more modest performance out of the market, allow the economy to catch up, allow the earnings to come through, and then you get sustainable growth from there. Well, independent telecom operator Vox Telecom's annual diluted headline earnings per share jumped 56% to 6.18 cents. This is the company increased its customer base and enhanced its product offering. Revenue rose 13% to 2 billion rand, but operating profit was down 3% as the tough economic climate led to increased bad debts and amortization of customer bases. No dividend was declared. CEO Tony van Marken joins us now for more. Pretty impressive results in a tough operating environment, but it has been about refocusing and cutting costs stringently in the group. Yeah, Bronwyn, you know, for the last year we've really been internally focused. It's been a tough economic environment and I think across most of our businesses we've had good growth. Uh, Orion, which is mainly in cellular lease cost routing, was pretty flat. Uh, we've had high bad debts, which is really a function of the current environment. We've seen high liquidations and, and a bit more pain in the consumer side. Uh, so we churned about 15,000 customers in our, in our consumer ISP business. But overall, I think, given all those tough economic conditions, we've come through pretty well. Coming to your bad deadline, I mean, you've got provisions of 23 million rand for the 2009 period. That's up from 18 million rand in 2008. And you did write off 12 million when it came to, to bad debts in this period. Is the situation going to improve from here? Look, we've, take, we've made a policy to, to provide for any, any uh, debt over, over 90 days. So that's, that's increased the provision, which we think is a, is a good policy going forward. Uh, the bad debt uh, number is high. Um, you know, looking at the industry and comparing it to some of our competitors who I've spoken to, I think it's in line with what people are experiencing in this market. Um, about but, run, run about 1% of revenue. Correct. Um, but there's still some pain out there with, with mainly small to medium sized business and we service 15,000 South African businesses every day and you have to expect some things to go wrong. So, you know, we're going to expect some more pressure there. I'm expecting you to jump in at this point, Kevin. Yes, I am, but I'm worried about that last deal. You know, last <laughs> Tony, what, what do you need, what do you sense that you need uh, to happen for the business to start to perform? Is it simply a question of a pickup in the general economy? Is it as simple as that? Or are there specific aspects which you think, uh, if this started to come through, you'd be more, much more happier? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, there's, there's a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you see a delay in, in capex deployment by some of the big, yeah. old, big banks and the, and the big companies in South Africa, so we get impacted by that. They don't buy new PCs, they don't upgrade, they wait a year. So obviously, although we, we provide a service in reducing cost, you see a delay in actual execution by some big corporates. On the regulatory side, we really need some serious changes to be implement, implemented by ICASA. 
We don't have local number portability. So if I go to a large corporate and say, let me move all of your numbers to Vox Telecom, um, I, I have to give them brand new geographic phone numbers. I can't port the existing numbers. So a lot of companies won't want to incur the expense. So there's some critical things like that will open up the market for further competition. And, and really it's a pity because we could be saving corporates and consumers a lot more money if we could get some of the regulatory hurdles dealt with. Are your gross margins sustainable at these levels? The interim period you were looking at a gross margin of 22%, that is up now to 25%. Is that pretty much where this group is going? Yeah, I think we should be consistent there, but it's, we're going to have some short-term pain as we transition our least cost routing business over to our voice, traditional voice network because with the lowering of wholesale interconnect rates, um, that, that affects the arbitrage in some of the voice business we do. So in the short term, there's a negative impact, but in the longer term, it's very positive because for all of our voice business and our retail uh, voice business, we'll get better margins over the longer term. And that's ultimately the, the revenue pie that we want to go after in South Africa. Simon, do you have a question? On yeah, Vox? It, it, I mean, two questions. Just first one, it's split between consumer and, 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 and business, your sort of private individual and business. And is one of them showing particular more pain? Are you incurring more bad debts in the one space or the other? Or is it relatively evenly split between? Yeah, I mean, about 200 million rand of the group revenue is really consumer related, so it's fairly small. Um, and and there's, there's quite a lot of pain in that business, but on a relative basis, it doesn't make as big an impact. So the, the, the big write-off has really been in the corporate space. And if I isolated it, there were a couple of, of large customers that just went bankrupt. Mm. And, and we couldn't recover some of those, those numbers. One more. One, one more very quick last, one. Last word. Tony, do you inter this, can we just go back to what you said? Because I found it quite intriguing. Do you think there's going to be movement in terms of the regulation and in terms of cap spending within the next year? Or is, it, is that more kind of a slow process at this stage? You, well, the first question is regulation. Mm -hmm. I, I think the new minister has put huge emphasis on things like interconnect. What we're really hoping for is that he looks at deregulation holistically because he's got to deal with local loop unbundling, um, uh, local number portability, carrier pre-select, which means you as a consumer can choose whichever uh, telephone network you want to use. On the CapEx side, I, I think we've probably turned a corner. We're starting okay. to see some of the big banks come back to the table and look at, at doing something. Tony, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much. That was 25